All right. So let's talk about uh, what are called nonlinear inequalities. Now, a long, long time ago, way on back in the previous semester, we talked about inequalities, but let's do a quick review. I know you've been studying that material every day of your life since then, but just in case, re refresh my memory, what is an inequality? Yep. It's when you have that little sign. An inequality. Well, it actually is called an inequality symbol, but what does it mean? Okay. That one means greater than. We've also got less than. Greater than or equal to. That's a good one. <laughs> that is not one. <laughs> you you made that one up. Alligator is not a thing. No, that's not that's not one of them. Less than or equal to. And then also, my personal favorite is not equal to, which is an equal sign with a line through it. We're not going to actually talk about that one. I said zero. We're going to talk about, uh, yeah, you did say that, and uh, it was wrong. I pointed that out. Pay mm -hmm. attention, please. So we're only going to talk about greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. We're not going to worry about the not equal to. Okay, so the reason why we say this is nonlinear is because this particular set right here. It's not linear. How do you know? Because it's like nonlinear. Uh-huh. How would I know x plus 3, x minus 3 was nonlinear? Because one here times x minus 1. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can we stop playing? That's a good guess. It's because <laughs> if I were to multiply this together, the first thing I would do is x times x, which is x squared. When your problem has x squared in it, that it's means it's quadratic and therefore nonlinear. Okay, so solving these, um, when it's a nonlinear and when it's an inequality, it tells us nonlinear, you already have multiple answers, right? You have two answers. We need one that four answers. Same thing here, except since it's an inequality, that means we're going to have way, way more than two answers. We are going to have infinite answers to this problem. We're going to have ranges of numbers for our answer. So the first thing that you do is what we've been doing the entire time, which is solve these. Solve these parentheses. Now this should be a clue to you that if you get a problem, like you will next, that doesn't already have the parentheses, you gotta put it in parentheses. So we're gonna be doing some factoring here. Let's go ahead and solve these. X equals negative three and X equals positive three. Those are our two values. Okay, so oh, negative three and positive three are like, you can think of it sort of like break points in our inequality. Either all my answers are going to be below negative 3, all of my answers are going to be above positive 3, or they could be in between negative 3 and positive 3. We're going to have ranges of answers. Either it's everything below negative 3, or it's everything between negative 3 and positive 3, or it's everything above positive 3, or it could be some combination of the two. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. We're going to draw a number line. And on the number line, we're going to put these two points, negative 3 and positive 3. Now, what I said was our answers are either going to be this section of numbers, or our answer is going to be this section of numbers, or it's going to be this section of numbers. So what I really want to know is, what's going on in all these areas? What's going on in between negative 3 and positive 3? What's going on at numbers below negative 3 or above positive 3? So I'm going to start off with between negative 3 and positive 3. I'm going to pick a number in between negative 3 and positive 3. I'm going to use 0. I can use any number I want that's between negative 3 and positive 3. I'm going to use 0. Now what I'm going to do is come back up to this equation, x plus 3x minus 3 greater than 0, and replace the x's with 0. So instead of x plus 3, it'll be 0 plus 3 x minus 3 will be 0 minus 3 greater than 0. Let's go ahead and solve this real quick. 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. That's wrong. So when I picked the number 0, I ended up with a statement that was false. What that tells me is that whatever the solution is, it's not the stuff in between negative 3 and positive 3. That is not part of my solution set. 
Let's check the two ends right here, the stuff below negative three and the stuff above positive three. Let's do above positive three next, okay? So I'm just gonna pick a number that's higher than positive three. Picking low numbers is generally a good idea since you're gonna have to plug them in. Lower numbers work better, but you could pick whatever you want. If you're like, I just really love the number 973, you can use that if you want to. It's a little easier if you pick small numbers. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, which is take this inequality and replace the x's with four. Four plus three is seven, and four minus three is one, and seven times one is seven. That statement is true. What that tells me is the numbers above three are included in my answer set. And I'm gonna do this by doing this symbol with the arrow, and you should remember this from last semester, I hope. We did inequalities. That's part of my answer. Numbers that are bigger than three, and if I write this numerically, I would say my x is greater than 3. So any number bigger than 3 is a solution here because when I plug it in, it works. Now there's one thing left for me to do, and that's numbers less than negative 3. Let's go with, let's do negative 5. I can pick any number I want to, and I replace it in the inequality here. And I solve it just like I did before. Negative five plus three is negative two. Negative five minus three is negative eight. And negative two times negative eight is 16. Just 16, because it's a negative times a negative. That's true. Which means that this section right here is also included in my answer. Numerically, what that means is x is also the numbers that are less than negative 3. And that's how you solve an inequality. Yes, ma'am? But wouldn't that always be the case? Like, shouldn't those be together? Because, like, I think about a number line, like, around the world. Mm -hmm. And, like, if it's going that way, it's going to eventually loop back around and come to a negative 3. Not, it happens a lot, but it doesn't happen all the time because the number line doesn't loop around. Like once you get like to a high enough number, you don't suddenly go back to the negatives. So usually you're right. Usually if it's the greater than, the less than also goes with it, but that's not true 100% of the time. I'm going to give you one a little later that's not. But usually you're right. Okay. So as I said, if you get one where it's not in parentheses already, your goal is to put it in parentheses. Calm down. So even though it's less than or equal to, at first you still solve it like it's an equal to. You solve it just like it's an equation. So how can I factor that? Um, like, uh, no, X this one. Two, X X. Nope. So, it's got a greatest common factor. X. Um, which X. leaves me with. X is there you go. Well, that's pretty easy. X equals zero and X equals four. Those are my two values, x equals 0 and x equals 4. Okay, so I'm going to draw my number line. And I'm going to put my marks here at 0 and 4. The question is, what's happening in between 0 and 4? Or less than 0 or greater than 4? So let's pick a number, doesn't matter which one, pick your favorite. Some number that is less than zero. Just shout one out. Thank you. Great. I'm gonna take that number and substitute it into this inequality and just see if it works or not, okay? So instead of x squared, negative two squared, minus four, and instead of four times x, four times negative two. 
So negative 2 squared is 4, and minus 4 times negative 2 is plus 8. So I end up with 12 less than or equal to 0. False. So what that tells me is numbers below 0 are not a part of my solution set. Okay? Let's pick a different one. Somebody shout out a number between 0 and 4. No, not that one. One. Two is fine. And we'll plug that one in. 2 squared minus 4 times 2 less than or equal to 0. So 4 minus 8 less than or equal to 0. So negative 4 less than or equal to 0. True. So that means the numbers between 0 and 4 are a part of my solution set. So those are included. Hey, quick question. What's the difference between that thing I just drew and this thing that I drew? The brackets are for yeah, when it's equal to, you use the brackets. When it doesn't have that equal to line, you use parentheses. You remember, I'm so proud. Okay, uh, now let's see about numbers bigger than four. Pick a number bigger than four. Okay. So six squared minus four times six is less than or equal to zero. 36 minus 24 less than or equal to 0, which is 12 less than or equal to 0. False. False. Which means that's not included in my set either. So the only one that's included is the numbers in between 0 and 4. How do you write that? This is a good way to write it using the number line. You can also do it like this. <coughs> That's a good way to write it. That's interval notation. And I like this one. That's pretty good, too. What's I like, that one called? Uh, it's called Taylor, like Taylor notation. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. all of these? Yeah, but eventually we're going to do some where they have like four different answers, and you'll have to do this five times. So, wow. something to look forward to. Can I bring scratch paper? No, I'm sorry. You have to do it all in your head. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. Oh, wait. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Okay, fine. On the day of the final, I'll like I'll sell you some scratch paper. <laughs> uh, no, you have to use uh, official college issued scratch paper. <laughs> it's really expensive. <laughs> like if you went and bought it at Walmart, you could get like two hundred sheets for a dollar. Yeah. But at our college, it's uh, eight dollars per half sheet. So you got to pay the tax. Sorry, that's how colleges go. Have you ever tried to buy like a three ring binder at a college bookstore? Lord have mercy. Get ready to donate a kidney. Sign over your firstborn if you want a pack of pencils. That's how it goes. Hey, so um, I'm really glad you asked that question because look, here's one that has more than two answers. How many answers is this one going to have? Like three. Luckily, they're already all in parentheses, so that's... <laughs> You need to have a more positive attitude. So let's go ahead and solve each one of these. I wasn't asking. I wasn't taking a poll. Hey, who wants to solve these? Quick show of hands. Who wants to do math? No one. Well, I guess we just won't do it then because you're the boss around here. Those are my three answers, negative two, one, and five. Can't imagine what a sorry state education would be if that was how you taught a class. Yeah. Who wants to learn the quadratic formula? Nobody? Well, I guess you don't need to do it. See you later.
<laughs> All right, here's our number line. Do I need to make the number line as big as I just did? Definitely not, but I think it's intimidating to do it that way. So there. You go. See, I didn't even use most of it. All right, so here's the thing. I'm going to have to pick four test points now. I need one that's below negative two. I need one that's in between negative two and one. I need another one in between one and five, and then I need one bigger than five. So I'm going to have to do this four times. So let's just start at the bottom and work our way up. Somebody, somebody give me a number less than negative two. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to plug it into this equation. Try to keep up, please. Once you get the numbers plugged in, it's just arithmetic, so calm down. Negative 1, negative 4, negative 8. I know without even doing any math, this one's going to be true. How do I know without even doing anything, it's going to be true? I don't freaking know because it's less than... It's a negative times a negative times a negative, so my answer is going to be negative, and every negative is less than zero. The negative times the negative is a positive, and the positive times the negative is a negative. Very well said. The actual number is negative 32, but you don't even need the number if you see that it's going to be negative. That's true. Uh, brackets are parentheses when I mark this. Bracket, because it's got the equal to line. So this little section here is included in my answer, I would write that as x is less than or equal to negative 2. Wow. That's the one you asked me about before. I don't know. I'm sure it's got a name for it. Oh my gosh, why? So... Let's pick a number between negative 2 and positive 1. Zero. Zero is a good choice. Zero. So it'll be 0 plus 2. 0 minus 1, 0 minus 5, less than or equal to 0. So this is going to be 2, negative 1, negative 5, negative 0. This one's going to be false. Again, I don't even have to do any math. My answer is going to be positive. A negative times a negative times a positive is positive. It's not going to be less than 0. You can figure out the actual number if you really like to complete things. But really all I'm looking for is a true or false, and this one's false. Cool. All right, so the numbers between negative 2 and positive 1 are not a part of my solution set. Let's look here between 1 and 5. Okay. So it'll be 3 plus 2, 3 minus 1, 3 minus 5, less than or equal to zero. So that'll be five, two, negative two. Is this going to be true or false? Hold on, just slow down. What was that negative 20? It's going to be negative 20. Um, so the numbers between one and five will be included in my set. So brackets on the one, brackets on the five. There we go. So x is between 1 and 5. Last set, what's the number bigger than 5? <laughs> okay. So then we'll do 6 plus 2, 6 minus 1, and 6 minus 5. This one's going to be false because these are all positive. When you multiply a bunch of positives together, no way it's going to end up being less than zero. So the two sets here are the numbers that are less than negative two and also the numbers that are between one and five. So how do we write that? 
So all the numbers that are less than negative 2 is from negative 2 all the way down to negative infinity. So here's what that might look like. Numbers less than negative 2 is from negative 2 all the way down until you run out of negative numbers. So I, it's from negative infinity to negative 2. So I had parentheses now. I because, you can't equal, because you can't equal negative infinity. Okay, infinity is not a number. Yeah, what about the 1 and the 5? We did one like that a little while ago. 1, 5. How do I say that these two are uh, together? That's what I was asking you. You put the, un you? the union symbol. You should remember this from last semester. We talked about it for like 20 minutes last semester. We talked about it for 20 minutes a year ago. How do you not remember? I slept in the Really? I haven't. <laughs> that is inappropriate for school, young lady. Let's try to keep it G-rated. This is a family place. There are children present. You're pretty much all children to me, I guess. Even you. Yeah. Making comments last week about how you're younger than me. You deserve this. <laughs> nope. Really? Really? It's 6.30. It's true. I'm just trying to figure out when to order my pizza until I'm ready by the time I'm done. <laughs> Mm. All right. Wait, give me a guess it. This is a little <laughs> trickier, uh, a little trickier than the last few, but you're still going to solve the equation kind of like you're used to. So even though it's a numerator and denominator, we're still going to solve these separately. In other words, we're still going to solve x plus 2 equals 0 and we're going to solve x minus 3 equals 0. So we get x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 3. So did the number line thing work? Now notice that one of the things we did here was we set the denominator equal to 0 to get one of our points there. Mm -hmm. And that is because in this type of function, we got to be real, real careful of this number because the denominator can't be 0. So x equals 3 cannot be one of our solutions because if it was, we would have a 0 denominator. And dividing by 0 is bad. So that's not right? No, those are still going to be our numbers. I just want you to keep in mind that, that 3 can't be one of our solutions. Because it would make the denominator zero. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Keep that in the back of your head. The answer can't be three. Okay. So uh, pick a number that is below negative two. Oh, negative. Let's plug it in right here. Okay, so we're going to have a fraction, but that's okay. Since we're comparing them to zero, it makes it really easy. Basically, the question we're asking is, is this going to be positive or negative? If it's negative, it's true, and if it's positive, it's false. So negative 2, so over, negative negative two over negative 7. A negative over a negative is positive. So this is false. Negative divided by negative is positive. Okay, let's pick a number between negative 2 and 3. Two, oh, um, one. Okay. Okay, so 1 plus 2 is 3, and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. That's 
That's negative 3 halves. Is negative 3 halves less than 0? Yep. So if I was going to mark this on the number line, bracket or parenthesis? Bracket. Bracket because it was equal to on the 2. Not a bracket on the 3, parenthesis on the 3, how come? It can't equal oh, it can't 3. Be. We have to put a parenthesis on the 3 because it can't equal that. Okay, one more. Number bigger than 3? 4. Okay. So that's 6 over 1. Is 6 less than or equal to 0? It is not. So when you write your answer, you have to write it such that there is a bracket on the negative 2 and a parenthesis on the 3. Even though the original equation had the equal to line, so you're thinking brackets. But it can't be 3. The answer can't be 3 because if it was, the denominator would be 0, and that would be bad. And Claire? Yeah. Okay, so so far every problem that we've done has been uh, less than or equal to zero. Let me show you an example uh, that is not. Might be. <laughs> so the first thing that you do is you find out what value can it not be. The denominator cannot be 0. So the first thing I'm going to solve is x plus 1 equals 0. So negative 1. Negative 1 is going to be one of the points on my number line, and the answer can't be negative 1, because if it was, the denominator would be 0. Right? Right. Then we're going to go back to this and just solve it like normal. So 5 over x plus 1 equals negative 2. Now why in this problem do we have to do the whole thing and in the last problem we just did the numerator? Like how come there was not one where we solved the whole thing? And it's because the answer was 0. If the answer is 0, then the numerator equaling zero makes the whole thing zero. Zero over anything is zero. That's why we didn't have to do the whole equation on this one. It's why we do have to do the whole equation on this one. Because this could be a, something crazy that would make it equal negative two. Right? So we gotta put the whole thing together. All right, how do we solve it? I mean, my big problem is that the x is in the denominator, okay. right? So let's multiply both sides by x plus 1, because what that's going to do is get rid of the x plus 1 here, so it's not in the denominator. But i got to multiply this side too. And now I'm going to solve two problems. I'm going to get the x out of the denominator, and also now it's not fractions anymore. And Lord have mercy, this is an easy problem. So you only get x by itself, right? I want to get x by itself. So add them or divide? Uh, neither. Distribute the two. Oh. So 5 equals negative 2x minus 2. Good, add two to both sides. That seems like a slick plan. And you are correct. The last step is to divide both sides by negative. Uh, leaving it as negative seven halves is fine. I'm actually going to write, uh, write the answer as a decimal because 
we are going to have to pick points on the number line in between these two numbers, and I think it's easier to think about negative 3.5 and where that is on a number line than it is to think about negative 7 halves and where that is on a number line. It's one of the few times when I prefer decimals to fractions. So number line, negative 3.5 will be one of them, and negative 1 will be one of them. All right. Pick a number that is below negative 3.5. 4. Negative, negative 4? Negative 4. Okay. So 5 over negative 4 plus 1 is less than negative 2. So negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. A little more difficult to think about fractions, so if you go ahead and divide this out, you might have a little easier time. 5 divided by 3, or divided by negative 3, is negative 1.67. Don't be scared of negatives. Is negative 1 less than negative 2? It is not. 1 is less than 2. Negative 1 is not less than negative 2. Good. All right. Let's pick one in between 3.5 and 1. How about negative 2? That sounds good. So we'll do 5 over... Negative 2 plus 1 is less than negative 2. So that's 5 over negative 1 less than negative 2. And 5 divided by negative 1 is negative 5. That's true. Good. So this section in the middle is going to be part of my solution. Brackets or parentheses? Okay. Numbers in between negative 3.5 and negative 1, I could write it like this. Negative 3.5 and 1. Okay, one more. Numbers yeah, bigger than... One or one. Oh, sorry, negative 1, you're right. Uh, one more. Numbers bigger than negative one? Uh, one. Okay. One. You guys really don't have a lot of love for zero, do you? Zero is so easy. I think zero is the best, or at least that's what I used to tell people when nobody would go to prom with me. You, you idiots with one date, everybody knows zero is the best. I don't have a prom date, so I can listen to whatever I want to in the car. So the entire thing is this little section in the middle from negative 3.5 to negative 1. All of that work and all you got was knowledge and a brighter future. <laughs> You're welcome. Any questions about that? Hmm? The this is the shortcut. Oh gosh. Do you want to see? Do you want to see the long way? No, the longest. Just for fun? No. <laughs>